look. This is a team that's got eight goals in three matches. They know how to find the back of the net. Yeah, I think that's going to be interesting to see how that 4-4-2 matches up with Clemson's typical 4-3-3. We mentioned Pitts Eckersall in the midfield. Certainly the two forwards, players to watch as well. They've got two players with multiple goals with Pitts Eckersall and with Brendan Herb. How about Clemson, the Tigers with the familiar 4-4 or 4-3-3 uh, three, three rather. And you've got Sela and Say up front. That one-two combination is lethal for the Tigers, along with Richmond. Yeah, Say is so good with his back to goal. And if he can get Sela coming underneath to combine, then it's a dangerous combination. Bulldogs in the all-black, Tigers in the all-white, and we're underway. A bit overcast here. It's rained for about four straight days. A beautiful day here in the upstate, isn't it? No doubt. What it was like on... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Well, and this match was originally supposed to be played yesterday, got moved because of weather. Here's an opportunity for the Bulldogs early on. And wow. sent away. Yeah, it looked like Ben Erkins there cutting that cross out and getting it cleared. Bulldogs will have it again. Clemson so aggressive. Kevin, the way they use the forwards to put pressure on the back line, they don't let you sit with possession. They want to get all up in your face. Yeah, they're going to force Asheville to try to break those lines. Playing with that diamond in midfield, that entry pass from the back line is going to be so important for UNC Asheville today. Pass to Tennifer Kimajan. There's a foul. Chance to meet the head coach of the Bulldogs, Mick Giordano, you see. Fifth year on the staff, second as the head coach. You like to see a guy, young coach, able to rise up like that where he is. Yeah, and he's trying to put a stamp on the program. He has gone heavy on the transfers this year to, to try to get in and be competitive immediately. So Skinner wide and sent in. Grabbed there by A.J. Bings. Bangs one of two keepers, and that was dangerous there. Yeah, that's the that's the pass we're talking about. That entry pass trying to break that forward line has to be clinical. But the other thing too is when Whitlock's receiving that, he has to check his shoulder, have an open body shape. He nearly turned into pressure on that one. Clemson will play it wide now. Ball forward. And that'll end up being a corner kick. First set piece opportunity for the Tigers. Yeah. Mohamed Say just so easily in an on by position. You can see him getting that blind spot of the center back. Able to earn his team a corner there. We'll mention Say's name a lot in a lot of different contexts. Seems like he has his nose in just about everything. Um, he's such a big kid, dangerous on these set pieces. They try to get it in, and boy, a lot of English on that one. And another corner for Clemson. The ball had some funky spin up in the air, and thought it might have almost clipped the corner there. Yeah, Ben Getz looked like he thought it was going over comfortably, didn't he? He really did. He relaxed, and I, I thought it was going to bite him. Corner sent in high. And a little bit wide. Nice opportunity there. Yeah, Ben Erkin sneaking in the back post. Looked like almost a free header. Such a looping cross coming in. You see Ben Erkins, a veteran, local product. Clemson will be happy with their defending shape from the top there. If they can force Asheville to go long and cut off those passing seams in the middle, 
We'll take that. That's intercepted. Here's Say. And a foul called. Yeah, I think that's a good decision by the referee. You can see the spot of the foul there. He saw contact. Gave Say the advantage to carry on. Advantage didn't develop, so it's just going to bring it back. I mean, the size advantage that Say has against the rest of that midfield is stark. Nice job there, but cleared away. You can get a good look at Asheville's shape there. Although it's a diamond in midfield, when they transition to defending, it's going to flatten out to two blocks of four. Skinner tracks it down. The only problem with that quark is it's so hard to get out into wide areas and defend quickly. Well, when we know Clemson likes to get the ball wide and use speed to get the ball up the field with pace. Now they're attacking the middle, say. An aggressive run there. Yeah, in those transitional moments, if they can change the point of attack quickly, they'll be able to find themselves some real estate to work with. Nathan Richmond already putting his stamp on this game. Freshman from IMG. Ball sent out of bounds. Yeah, H.J. DeVivo, wise decision, just pump that out and reset. That's across, dangerous here, and deflected away. Big time save. Well, you get a glimpse. We talked about it in the opener. Uzman Silla just so dangerous on the dribble, creating that opportunity, running with the ball and drawing attention. Fantastic play here by Benz. Look at the aggression again by Richmond. He did well to cover his near post there. Third corner here in the first seven minutes for the Tigers. Touch in. Opportunity. And sent away. Richmond again aggressive. And another corner. Yeah, a little miscommunication on the back line for Asheville. They looked like they thought Ben Getz was coming for it. He was looking for the center back to clear his lines there. You can certainly tell. You mentioned how active in the transfer portal Asheville has been. They've surrendered 11 goals in three matches. That communication is going to take a little while. That's a lot of talent in that group. I expect they'll become more cohesive. Ball in. Parrish very aggressive, trying to go over the top. Sent away. Say, misdirection. Sela finds Wallif, now back around. It's Sela. Nice touch, Skinner. Usman wide on the shot. Yeah, just a little half chance there. He couldn't quite hit it as cleanly as he wanted to. Now Joseph Skinner, that left back coming forward can be such a weapon. Overloading that left flank. Ball goes out of bounds. a look at the student section. One of the liveliest student sections in America. Coming out on a post-Labor Day Tuesday night. Here's Elton Chifamba. Touch to... Oh, buddy. Say, into the middle. Chance to settle and again deflected. Really nicely done from Wallaf to Mose there. And Richmond 
Just takes a little bit too much time on that opportunity. If he can pull the trigger and just put that on frame in one touch, he's going to force a save there. Nathan Richmond, a fantastic start. That was a nice little block from Heath Flato there for Asheville. Up in the air and snagged out of the air by Benz. Yeah, ben Erkins is there as a threat as always on those set pieces. Now Bangs will set it back up. Plateau forward. Good defending on the back. You can see Clemson's just trying to bait Asheville into playing that central pass to their holding midfielder. Chafamba's there, ready to pounce on it. There he is. And again, going to play through the middle. One to guard. An errant pass, and now the Bulldogs with an opportunity. Nice ball through. Kamajan, shot saved. First threat on Joseph Van Dema. Yeah, opportunistic, aren't they? A turnover in midfield. Two passes and they're in. Kamajan put that on frame with a little bit of pace as well. First shot. You see there for the Bulldogs. And now they've got their first corner as well. This will be 27. Connor Behan. Connor Behan. Low, he gets it back. In the middle and sent away. And out of bounds. Chance to throw. Flat toe. A little bit aggressive with his line that time. And there's a look at Mike Noonan. 13th season as a Clemson head coach. He's been adamant. He wants his team to feel like they've turned the page, certainly since the Indiana match. But they're off to a great start. and. Here's an aggressive attack. Chance to score first, and they do it. That's an opener. And Nathan Richmond can certainly take all the time he wants now. And the backflip to boot, Nathan Richmond. What a well-timed run to break that back line of Asheville. Gets his first career start, his first career goal. What an impact. Yeah, look at the weight of this pass from Mohamed Say. Nicely in behind. He curved his run to stay in an unwide position. As soon as the ball was hit, you could see the pace kick in. And composure on the finish. Tigers strike first, and then look here. Woo! I'm impressed. How many times do you think he practiced that? In the 13th, he puts Clemson in front. Richmond's got ties to the program that pre-exist him. His dad was a national champion here at Clemson. 1987, Richie. And they're hoping it's like father, like son. Back in the middle of the action here out wide. Nice touch on the attack. Shot, save, and boy, finally corralled in there by Banks. 
Uh, you could see the ball come from Sean Smart getting forward in that right flank. That's what we referenced in those transitional moments. Can you get the ball in wide areas and create two V1s? Look at Smart getting forward and what a ball he plays in. That's really good awareness by Bangs. That's six shots for Clemson already. Incredibly aggressive. Putting pressure on that defense of UNC Asheville. Now let's see if the Bulldogs can get forward. Well, we talked about how important it was for Clemson to, to be here and not look forward to Boston College. They certainly appear to be in the moment. A bit dangerous there, but forwarded. Clemson putting the pressure on on the side. And they win possession, Richmond does. And out of bounds, a throw for the Bulldogs. Griffin Stidham sends it forward. A.J. DeVivo. Leaves it off and across. How about Andema? And Joseph Andema, no hesitation coming out to collect that. That was another dangerous possession that time by the Bulldogs, thwarted by Clemson. Say trying to track it down. An incredibly aggressive line that time taken by Bangs. Yeah, just a little miscommunication. Looked like uh, Stidham had it comfortably. Perkins turns it over. Pitts Eckersall has been quiet. There he helps swing the ball to the left side. Here's Sela. Talked about how magic he is with his feet that time. Maybe a bit too confident. Yeah, Pitts Eckersall was just able to pick his pocket, take the pass off of him. Here's Sammy Killiman. Some nice footwork, but easily taken away by the Tigers, and now a chance to get forward. Skinner up to Say. Keeps it alive, and now taken away again. Connor Behan still with it and intercepted. Yeah, really well read by Adam Lundegaard there. Behan dangerous on the dribble though. It's something to note. He got pretty deep by himself. Here's Chafamba. Back to Wallif. Say. There's a giveaway. A few minutes. It took the Bulldogs to feel like Clemson's defense. Now they look a little more comfortable attacking. This one wide. Plateau. Excellent defending there. Yeah, the athleticism on Sean Smart to cut that out. A lot of grass on the wide side. They'll send it over for Say. And it'll be a Clemson throw in. We've got a nice little uh, battle brewing here between Mohamed Say and Griffin Stidham. Those two are getting quite familiar with each other. Can't imagine that's going to change. Especially with the Bulldogs 
highly motivated not to surrender another goal. Nathan Richmond in the 13th minute. The lone goal scored so far. A lot of space for Sela. Gets it back. Oh. And in the corner. Well, we talked about the wide areas. You could see Joey Skinner find that entry pass into the feet of Mohamed C. And he just nice little combination with Sela. The say Sela combo strikes again. This is as good as it gets. Say so good with his back to goal. And we we were referencing when he gets Sela running underneath him, how dangerous that can be. And Sela's third goal of the year. And I believe I'm right in saying all three have been assisted by Say. I would not be surprised. He had quite the game against that very good Indiana team to open the year. Another chance for Say here. Going to work. Leaves it for Richmond. Across. In front. That was a good chance for Say to double his goal count. And Brandon Prayers just whipped that ball across there. Another look at this. That was incredibly dangerous. Stayed in an onside position. Clouds have parted now. Sun shining down on historic Riggs Field. Got to give a special shout out to the grounds crew here at Clemson. You could have almost ridden a jet ski over this field yesterday. And we faced about a three hour delay on Sunday for the women's team to get their match in. It was a long wait for the fans here two days ago. Worth it. There's a whistle and a foul. Brendan Herb whistled for it. Now Brendan Herb is certainly familiar with this Clemson team. He transfer from Oregon State. There's another one. Just like that, Mohamed Say gets his. And it's 3-0. Usman Silla returns the favor. Beautiful through ball there. Struck so well with his left foot. Check out Silla making something happen. Just predatory, one touch. He's not trying to control that. He knows where the goal is, hits it in stride. I can't imagine a more exciting team in America when things are really clicking than this Clemson team with the way they work together up front. Yeah, the movement is so good in the final third. You have wing backs overloading the wide areas. Sela gets his third assist. So three goals, three assists for Usman Sela already. This is the fourth game of 2022. Long shot and scooped up. And Dama again. That was a nice opportunity for Sam Presser, who just joined the action. Yeah, pulling the trigger from distance, testing the goalkeeper. Here's Skinner. I'll say forward. He's got his man, couldn't quite hit him. So close to an exceptional goal again. Really nice chip to that back post. Brandon Parrish just attacking it. 
Did well to keep that in. Yeah, I don't think anybody would have blamed Paris for kind of staying down and finishing his slide, but so some really good athleticism and stick to itiveness right there. We're not even halfway done with the first half. Already Clemson's got three on the board. And offside the call. Good awareness from UNC Asheville. Quickly clear that line. That's really a that's really one where you're kicking yourself a little bit. Bang's going to send it long. Freshman from Raleigh. Not that anyone would, but if you ever doubted Clemson's athleticism, watch how everybody plays a ball in the air in the midfield. Yeah, while up there winning that one. Erkin so good in the air. Lundegaard so good in the air. Presser comes away with it. Bulldogs looking to be the attacker. DeVivo. Pitts Eckersall, good pressure applied, and Clemson really doing a good job corralling him, understanding how dangerous he is. Presser, I think Presser's only got one speed. And Dama. Yeah, it looked like Luca Nelson was in an onside position there. Ball forward to Skinner. Clemson going to play wide, back into the middle. Sela, dispossessed. Aiden Whitlock from behind. Yeah, recovering and doing just enough, but certainly that's too easy. Silla is too open to receive that ball in the first place. You talked about how difficult it is in that formation for the Bulldogs. Here's Skinner. Gets around. Schematically, what can be done? Well, they just have to really, really be aware in those moments and get one of those center mids into a wide area immediately in transition. But if when you're talking about a Clemson team that moves the ball so well and changes the point of attack, it's a really tall order. Much easier said than done, certainly. You can see how quickly they get the ball in wide areas. Lundergarn's able to find out if they can create a 2v1 in this situation. Skinner was just in an offside position receiving that ball. But you saw how quickly Sela came over to support the ball. You have to track that runner. Twenty-six minutes in. All Clemson so far. Three goals from three different Tigers. You know, we talked about this too. This Clemson team, they lost a lot of experience. Uh-oh, turnover. Oh, that's gonna be a yellow card as well. Just be hand, just a little frustrated in that moment. That all comes from Receiving the ball in midfield, not having an open body shape. Recognizing you cannot turn in that situation. Shafamba was just able to pick the pocket and dispossess the player. Connor Behan picks up the yellow card. Our first of the night. Here's another look at it. 
And it's late on the challenge. I tell you, this is a dangerous area too, just outside the penalty area. Sila was going right at Griffin Stidham too. Looks like we have Brandon Parrish and Nathan Richmond standing over it. I would have to think this is going to be Brandon Parrish. Sophomore from Nashville. Maybe try to shape this over the wall. Sometimes you're, you're too close in to get the ball back down after you get it up. Try to go low and hit the wall. Down. Clemson will regroup from the back. Here's Sean Smart. On the guard. Erkins, bit of a miss hit. Got a whole drum line over there. Foul whistled there against Flato. This touch was just a little bit heavy, and Brendan Parrish is able to nick it off of him. Fourth foul whistled against the Bulldogs. Tigers have yet to be whistled for one. Nicely done, Wallace to say, Skinner. And there's the first foul for Clemson. That was a bit of frustration there because Skinner knows he had an opportunity. Yeah, his last touch was a little heavy, but nonetheless a terrific run. And what a little creative back hill from Say to put him in. Now Skinner just a little late on the San Diego transfer, Dylan Thompson. Look at the foul totals. As aggressively as Clemson plays, it is a team that tends to play cleanly. Yeah, controlled aggression, high energy, but also very disciplined. You don't want to give up fouls, particularly in your defensive third. And here come a host of substitutions for Clemson. Dylan Sullivan in there. There's Isaiah Reed, one of the elder statesmen on this team. Richmond will come off. Chafamba's off. Richmond. And Parrish. Muhammad say that's a fantastic bit of football from those four young players. Not a bad shift there from Say. A couple of assists and goal. And not bad. First, first 30 minutes. This is what we've talked about with. Clemson, you mentioned a conversation you had with Mike Noonan where he said, they're not young, but they're new. They're new. Yeah, those were Coach Noonan's words. Talked a lot about this team having their own identity. Certainly proud of the, the tradition and winning that third national championship last year, but they have turned the page. This team is looking to, to establish their own identity. They have goals of their own. Well, and in these early season matches, you've got to think that one of the goals is developing your team. Isaiah Reed. Opportunity here for Wallace. In the middle, this is Gomez and a dead ball. Reset. 
But one thing Clemson's got the luxury of being able to do, you could send a different starting 11 out there every single night and feel like you're going to get a high level of play. Yeah, this is one of the deeper teams I can remember. Very high energy. Great touch. But as you said, Qualk, it's all about finding the chemistry. Perhaps this midfield player coupled with this wide player can do some things. Sam Presser putting a little pressure on the Tigers. DeVivo out. Thirty-three Miles Edmondson, sophomore from the UK. It also allows you to keep players fresh. Yeah, very important when you're starting to play two games a week. You know, this game was originally scheduled for Monday. It was pushed back because of the inclement weather and. Quick turnaround to a Saturday match at Boston College to open Atlantic Coast Conference play. See Mike Noonan getting another sub ready. Titus Sandy Jr. Looks like he may be about to check in. No pressure whatsoever on Erkins. Thought he'd just keep on going forward till he was stopped. I'm just content to keep possession. Now there's a matchup they want a 2v1 with Scylla. It frees him again. There's Reed. Good hustle there. No one out, but Dylan Sullivan. Heck of a run just to get to that ball. A bit of a dangerous throw for the Bulldogs here. Clemson a chance to play. Reed gets it out wide. This is Skinner and deflected away. Another corner for Clemson. This will be seven in the first half. Yeah, they've really ratcheted up the pressure, haven't they? And you would think human nature, as we see a couple of subs, Titus Sandy Jr. in, Tristan Deloach also in. A couple of second-year players, Sandy a sophomore, Deloach a Richard freshman. Corner sent in and just deflected. Boy, that was close to goal number four. That is a heck of a save from Benguetz. Wallaf did everything right, powered that down. Bottom left corner, he somehow got a paw to it. Offside. Here's a replay here of what was almost a big time goal and a set piece. Heck of a save there. For a big fella, he got down very quick, didn't he? Tell you what, I think that was Strobeck, I believe. Was that Strobeck on the header? He wanted that goal. Again, 
Clemson able to win the foot race. The hustle of Sullivan. I mean, you just talked about, prior to that last shot, Clemson's ratcheted up the pressure. You would imagine with human nature that you would ratchet down the pressure when you're up three goals. That's Not the, the case. It the, seems like sharks smelling blood in the water. Well, and that's the luxury of having such a deep and talented bench. Guys that are coming in, sat the first 30 minutes. They're fresh. They want to make a statement. Hey, coach, look what I can do. Doing all the, all the right things. This group is just as hungry to score as the players that started the match. Silas Goss in for Presser. Clemson another sub. James Kelly in for Wallace. Clemson spent a lot of time in its attacking third here in the first half. 12 shots, seven have been on goal. A little too far for Skinner. And a goal kick coming for Asheville. Skinner's just been up and down that left flank all game. Meanwhile, Clemson's back line continues to impress. Well, this is actually a, a good job of breaking pressure there from Asheville, finding that entry pass centrally and combining to, to break that forward line. Just a final better ball as needed. Very aggressive, and he's fouled. Goss was determined to win possession and keep it. That's what Andama's looking at. It's a tough sun over there this time of night. And no problem. Very tough, and I think normally Clemson would have picked the other side, but you're looking at a 7 p.m. kickoff as opposed to a 6 p.m., so that sun's only going to drop further and be a real menace for the goalkeeper in the second half. Opportunity here for the Bulldogs deflected. That's a good block from Sean Smart there. Brendan Herb. Found smart, defending. Well, you've gotten some glimpses of, of why this team has scored eight goals in their first three games. They're not afraid to, to take their chances. They can get forward quickly. Yeah, they don't have to possess the ball very long to get something promising together. Now whistle on a Stoppage of play. It's like Aiden Whitlock down there. Shaken up. See what happened. I oh, just stumbled there. Rolled that ankle maybe. Yeah, that ball got pinged in there so quickly. His ankle wasn't locked. Dangerous spot. You've got to be so precise. 
That's a good ball forward for Nelson. And a foul whistled there. Got Sandy Jr. Yeah, Luca Nelson. Sandy just a little too much with the hands and the arms from Sandy. Nice job to track that down by Miles Edmondson. Couldn't quite keep it in bounds, though. I think Whitlock's going to have to come off. Yeah. He tried to go, but body's not letting him have it. I think you're right. Just rolled his ankle a little bit there. Perhaps hyperextended it and then tried to play through it. Joel Preston checks in, junior from Asheville. Skinner forward. Look at how quickly they're able to get the ball in a wide area. This is smart. And it goes through the hands and almost out the back. Thought Clemson was going to get an accidental corner kick opportunity. Yeah, that ball had a lot of movement on it. Oh Deflected. That's that pressure from Clemson. They're not just going to let you have the opportunity to put the ball down and play. Yeah, and they like to bait you into those situations where it looks like it's a safe pass, you have time, and before you know it, you have two and three players converging on you and blocking your options. I feel like I make this point a lot, but it's always impressive as there's a giveaway. Here's Reed. Shot just wide. Yeah, Walla, is that Strobeck just stripping the ball away? Strobeck starts the attack. Reed, not far from finishing it. Not just, oh, here's a, another look at it. Oh, that was 19. That was James Kelly. Looks like he stripped the ball off Behan there and just put Reed in. But not just how talented and athletic this team is, but how fit they are and how hard they work. And that combination, you know, a lot of teams have one or the other, but it's rare that you see both. And particularly, as you've been saying, Kevin, with the number of players that can impact the game and are willing to do the hard things. Oh, yeah. If you can somehow marry incredible talent with a blue-collar work ethic, that's just going to be a recipe for success. And it's all about making the opposition uncomfortable and putting them in uncomfortable situations. And Clemson is pretty adept at doing that. Foul called. Stuart Patnod had an opportunity. Uh, he just got by Lundergaard there. Lundergaard left a leg in. Fourth foul called on Clemson. And these are the moments where Clemson needs to remain focused. Defending this set piece. Stared into the sun right before the half. Free run and picked up. It's offside anyway. Good instincts right there by Andama, though, because that looked incredibly dangerous. It looked like Joel Preston just found himself free. Watch this again. Impressed with Andama. The Ghanaian freshman from Montverde Academy getting a start tonight. 
in the lineup for UNC Asheville. It's 45, Ian McGill. He's a junior, another North Carolina native, and immediately tested. Yeah, tested early. You can see 6'2", 170 from Jamestown, North Carolina. You want to talk about throwing you right into the fire. Not only did, were you tested, but you got to look at that sun. You can see how it's just dropped now. It's it's worse in the second half here, Quok. The Bulldogs, you mentioned it. There's another look at the sun, and you can see it very clearly right over the top of the indoor tennis complex. And who said the coin toss doesn't matter? Not you, sir. I know that. Opportunity for Clemson here into the middle and a bit of a miscommunication. You know, it is a credit to Clemson. We talked about how effortlessly it seemed that the Bulldogs were able to flip the field several times in the first half. Only three shots. They had the two dangerous ones. But Clemson has been able to limit the damage because the back line has been solid. Yeah, force, force the shots from outside, be compact in and around your area. Gonna play it back to McGill. Good ball. And you can see Asheville's dropped Connor Behan into more of a attacking midfielder role. Get him more on the ball a little bit as opposed to starting as that front runner. Of course, of course he's sitting on a yellow from the first half. Just needs to be careful in there. So Sandy Jr. gets a start in the second half. Sela taken away that time by Stidham and sent out wide. Sean Smart the throw. Here's Reed into the box and sent away. Smart again gets around. He found his mark, but just not quite the angle they were looking for. Yeah, Say just trying to put that back across the face of the goal. Clemson in just about every conceivable way, able to get considerably deep into the defense. And now again, forward, nice ball. Reed finds the back of the net. Quick start after the half for the Tigers, and the veteran Reed cashes in. Well, we were talking before the game how this Clemson attack so unselfish in and around the area. Silla could have easily pulled the trigger himself there at the top of the box, but he believes Isaiah Reeves has a better opportunity. He just lays a beautiful ball in there for him. And who's right in there? Usman Silla. Gets the assist. That's two assists for Silla to go along with his goal. Say with two assists and a goal. And Reed, the beneficiary, his second goal of his season. And his 14th career goal in a Clemson uniform. Of course, Reed very famously did all the scoring for Clemson in the national championship game a year ago against Washington. Yeah, got himself a brace there. Two very different goals. Here's Say. You can grab from behind. Think Good effort by Herb. I think we're going to see a yellow card here on the jersey pool. Yep. He's going to keep the card in his pocket. I was wondering how many yards he was going to be able to run attached at the hip to <laughs> Muhammad Say. Reed gets it wide and good defending there. And the Bulldogs will keep the ball. That's very well done on the back line by, that was Pitts Eckersall, I believe. Yeah, I didn't think that took a touch off of Sean Smart's foot, but. 
Referee has a better angle there, considering he's down on the field and we're up in the booth, right? That's never stopped me before, Kevin. <laughs> Wallif sends it for Say. And that'll be a goal kick. 4-0, the Clemson lead. Four games so far. Tigers have now managed to score 10 goals as a team. So plenty of time left in this one. There's a long run for Pitts Eckersall. Maybe the best attack he's had today. Smart, able to escape. Say, he's just so long. There's a foul. And this will be a card. It's going to be Miles Edmondson there. Just a little late on the challenge. Oh, maybe not. He took it out. And he does get the card. Let's take another look at it. Yeah, it was too aggressive there on the challenge. Oof. Yeah, he showed the bottom of his cleats there. Shot, save. He was just trying to shape that into the far corner. It's so difficult to see the ball with that sun. Uzman Sila from about 25 out. That was a fantastic shot. Yeah, did well to just parry that away. Punched away by McGill. There's Silla again. Ooh. Plays through. Stop it. Wow. Stop it. Fancy footwork there. That is a nice bit of ball handling. <laughs> we got a little picture there. We talked about how good he is in 1v1 situations. That was 1v4. Great turn there. Gets beyond. He took half the back line there. Yeah, nearly found his found his man on the cross as well. Early second half. Four nil. Four different goal scorers for Clemson. Yeah, just good pressure from Isaiah Reed there. Forcing McGill to go long. Tigers a chance again. Here's Reed. Does he have help? Not quite enough. And Reed, last touch. That'll be a goal kick. Tried to sacrifice the body there to no avail. Yeah, Edmondson did well, held his ground there. Strong in a challenge. Well done there by Chafamba. Here's Say. Touch to the middle. And the attackers ran together. Yeah, the ball just kind of fell awkwardly, didn't it? Smart. In and saved. Doesn't take much daylight. Clemson's going to have a go. Yeah, McGill did very well to hold this. That's the tenth shot on goal for Clemson today. Just two for the Bulldogs. And since the half, four shots for Clemson, three on goal. 
in less than 10 minutes. Yeah, they certainly came out wanting to be the aggressor in the second half, keep their foot on the gas. I'm sure some very pointed locker room messaging, a big part of that. Clemson whistled for a foul. There you see. Nashville's been whistled for three more than the Tigers. Behan sent in and sent away. Let's see if something's brewing here. Danger. Say. Cross. Deflected. Wide. Look at the chemistry with those two just getting forward. Minimal number of passes. And it's almost like there's a different wrinkle in the connection every time. What a ball this is. Heck of a save from McGill. That's still his fourth shot of the match, his third shot on goal. He and Say continue to impress up front. Corner. Chance to play from the back. That's a Reed. Good ball in. Can he get through? No, and an offside flag goes up. I think that was Joey Skinner trying to play him in. Just a fraction off sides. Love the idea, though. There's a look at Ian McGill. He's come in, surrendered a goal, but he's also got three saves. All that in 12 minutes. Silla keeping the pressure on. This is Flato. Chafamba's fouled. Look like Patnod. Chafamba, Skinner, more danger, smart into the middle, shot save, McGill again. Oof. See how quickly they change the point of attack, really unbalanced that Asheville team there. You could see the frustration on Skinner's face. There's a quality ball delivered from Sean Smart. Ooh. Found the head of Say, but a little bit high. And some substitutions coming in now. Looks like for UNC Asheville. This is Sammy Killiman. Aiden Whitlock also checks back in. Luca Nelson. Yeah, we thought Whitlock had tweaked his ankle earlier, so good to see him make another appearance. Number 
Goss is out. Behan also out. Now Asheville on the move. Herb has it taken. Good defending by Wallace. Look out. Ball's knocked away. You have to immediately sprint back and retreat or else Clemson will absolutely eat your lunch. Click on the restart. Griffin Siddham was taking no chances with Uzman Silla bearing down on him there. Just put it out of play. Get organized quickly. Joey Skinner got the shot. He was denied and now he'll exit Enrique Montana. Fourth year junior from Cedar Crest High School in Duval, Washington. Six assists a year ago, already won this year. Playing on the right side. You're gonna try to move it that direction. Yeah, Skinner may not have an assist or goal to show for it, but I thought he was really, really good on the day, Quark. Getting forward a ton, really, really involved in those wide areas. This is Say. Taken down. Another look at this. Hard to take him down. That's one way to do it, Dylan Thompson. Just a little too much with the hands. We talked about how tough it is. It's, it's one thing to get the ball up over the wall. It's another thing to get it back down again and under the crossbar. This is more the distance where you can shape the ball to do that. That first opportunity, the second half, right at the top of the area is so difficult. I think we could see Gomez try to just put this right over into that near corner. Gomez has been in this spot so many times in his career. And he did just that. Maybe a little too much in the middle. And now a counterattack chance. Although there's a case of Clemson sprinting back. And a throw in for the Tigers. They just don't let you have too many touches. I mean, two, three passes. If you're not considerably forward, you're not going to be. Well, you always have to have an idea of what you're going to do with the ball before it gets to your foot. If you're making a decision, once you take your first touch, it's too late. Silla. Had it taken away. Stidham able to get it from him, but the result is a corner. Gomez gonna come and take it. Ball in. Nice job by Thompson to get it out of there. And he pumps that forward quickly. Silla led his man too far. Yeah, a little miscommunication. He was looking for the overlapping run there. He thought Gomez was going to continue on. Ball into the middle. Shot blocked. That was Gomez. That's about the same range from his game winner against South Carolina, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Very similar look. Throw for the Bulldogs. Clemson gets it right back with Smart. This is Wallace. And a corner kick. Attack thwarted by Flatto, but not without a cost. 
Here comes Gomez to take another one. Kevin, this is the 13th corner kick of the game for Clemson. Well, you always want to see an end product when you get in the final third. Talk about final third outcomes. Are they corner kicks? Are they shots on goal? Are they some type of shot? What do you have to show for your attacking endeavors? And they've generated a lot of shots, but they've also caused a lot of trouble for that Asheville back line. Clemson now with nine shots in the second half. Six of those have been on frame, and Asheville has yet to get a shot away. And I know we keep harping on this, but it bears repeating. It takes a special mentality to be able to have a 10-shot advantage, a three-goal advantage at the break. You put some starters back in, but you've got a combination of players out there. It's a little bit different than what you showed in the first half. Well, and to redouble your efforts and get that advantage anew in the second half. Yeah, and I think what's most impressive is that it's easy to get greedy in those moments. You come in the game, I want to get a goal. Everybody's getting on the score sheet. But you saw even the last goal, Silla, to, to find Reed and be unselfish in that moment, knowing that Reed had a better opportunity to score. Bulldogs just trying to organize, and they just can't do it. Ball chipped across toward Reed. Pitts Eckersall has to give it up. Good job from Enrique Montana coming forward, defending there. And again, just stepping right in front. That's well done. Titus Sandy Jr. with some nifty footwork, and now the ball's on the near side. Just right out the other side. Shot. Looked like maybe a cross. I thought it was going to be a shot initially, but a cross that was a bit too deep. Yeah, they changed the point of attack so quickly, got out the other side, created a 2v1 situation. Next thing you know, the ball is whipped in. McGill has to come out and make a save. Subs in before Clemson can trigger it. All right, here's a look back at that last run. Yeah, just creating that overload. Brandon Parrish back in, Marco Garcia. See him for the first time today. There's Nathan Richmond, of course, currently sitting on the game-winning goal. Say, going to hit the showers. Wallif also. Silla also out. And a nice ovation for them and well deserved. What a performance by 9 and 10 in white. I'm sure Coach Jim wants to have those guys well rested for Saturday when they open ACC play at Boston College. So he wins a foot race here. Pretty good run by Kamajin. Yeah, I thought that was last touch by Kamajin. I did too. Asheville throw in. Opportunity for Pitts Eckersall. Plays in the middle and again Clemson. It's like they're playing with 15. All the way across for Reed. Can he get there? Nice work by McGill. 
That was a tough assignment there to track that ball down. Cross, that was Montana. Here's Parrish. Nice ball. Through for Smart. Poor touch there. I think everyone in the area thought that was going to get picked out for Isaiah Reed. He did well to cut that back. Uh, Marco Garcia. Nice opportunity for the freshman. Gomez into the middle. Richmond back out. Ball high from Montana. Cleared away. Shot and wide. Hey, look, he actually came out to grab that. I thought he would elect to just punch that away. There was so much traffic in there. Now he's to run the risk of not pulling that down. This is Sam Presser back in and David McIver. Kamajan and Flato both take a seat. For the Bulldogs, it's about building depth, too. We talked about a lot of different pieces. Bunch of transfers here. And a young coaching staff still trying to find the right combinations. Yeah, they'll, they'll get another opportunity. Bounce back against Belmont in their next match. Taken away there. Montana got surrounded on all sides. That was well defended. And Killerman, I believe, was the one that ultimately poked it out. Look at Richmond just making it predictable, forcing the ball to that side. Clemson will gladly take that clearance. We got a whistle and we got a player down on the sideline. That is Luca Nelson. All the way across the field. Hard to tell, it may be a cramp. And that was off the ball. I didn't I didn't see any contact there. Looks like he may be trying to stretch that calf. There's a look at him. A little sub form nonetheless. Montana, nice ball forward. Richmond thought he had another opportunity. Here's Richmond. Scored his first career goal in the 13th minute of tonight's game. As Kevin said, currently sitting on a game winner. Yeah, really well-timed run there. Cool on the finish, very composed. Deflected. And taken right back. That's incredibly well done. Reed, Ford, chance, it's deflected. Big time save from McGill. 
Looked like that ball was just a little out of Chafamba's reach. Reed gets it back and deflected again. Now you got a player down, they'll play on. And that did look like a cramp. Chasing after the ball, you could see Stidham go right down. Here's another look at that shot. Reed, a great opportunity. Look at the ball. Yeah, McGill does everything right. Comes off his line, tries to make himself as big as possible. 15.45 left on the clock here. Almost 75 minutes in. Three first half goals for the Tigers, one early in the second. And we've been in a holding pattern ever since. Come on, Black. I think there's an expectation Nashville's going to give the ball back here. Yep. They do. Nice sign of sportsmanship. Good instincts there by Andema. Yeah, they were just trying to pick out pressure on that through ball. It's just a little heavy. Andema has not been tested a bunch, but he's always been ready. He's not been back on his heels in goal. Well, we've seen we've seen two goalkeepers this year, haven't we? We've seen Trevor Manning getting some time. Obviously filling uh, big shoes, not from just a, a quality standpoint with George Marks, but a leadership role that he possessed. So both of these goalkeepers have done very well. And they're going to have to keep it going against this upcoming schedule. You see two top 15 programs on there, but back-to-back -back road trips, including that ACC opener, and always big to start ACC play, especially away from home. Yeah, and Syracuse, as you know, has proven to be a tough opponent for Clemson here recent years. Of course, they met in the Final Four. I think it was the 2015 College Cup. Reed going to take a seat. Lundegaard as well. Oh, that's clever. Oh, yep, a whistle. That will be a yellow, I think. Chafamba also out. Dawson Malcolm, Strobeck and Sullivan, and a yellow card issued to Dylan Thompson. One more look at this. How about it? That's clever. Little shake of the hips got around him. This is Gomez. Plays it forward. Richmond trying to pressure. Well done. And well defended. Nathan Richmond has the engine that just keeps going and going and going. Doesn't reminds me a bit of uh, Grayson Barber. Played here a few years ago. Great comparison. Up. Just high energy, always pressing, willing to outwork anyone. I see a little bit of that in Sam Presser too. We haven't seen a lot of him, but. He's another guy, seems to be making things happen. Very aggressive player in there. He and Sandy run together. And yeah, that was a, one of the players that Coach Giotron and I talked about. I think he has a very big upside. There he is again. An opportunity here for the Bulldogs. Good defending by Clemson. A brick wall back there. Dawson Malcolm just in the game and tested. And then Sandy able to get it away. Oh, well, you referenced it earlier. 
at this moment now it's all about staying healthy but keeping the clean sheet. McIver was on the attack there, so another player who's a little bit fresher in the game. Speaking of fresh, how about the pressure being put forth by Garcia? Yeah, Garcia and Flex Stroh back there just trying to make play predictable, make the field small. Pitts Eckersall into the middle, shot deflected. Good block in the end, but you don't want to give Pitts Eckersall too many chances back there. Richmond fouled. McIver. Montana. Finds Garcia, the freshman from Italy. And a foul. And down in a heap goes McIver. And Marco Garcia gets a yellow card. Ooh. Careless. Yeah, just love with the bottom of his boot a little bit. Always an easy decision for the referee. That's the first yellow card issued to a Clemson player today. Behan, Edmondson, and Thompson have received yellow cards for the Bulldogs. Here's Montana. Some room to work with. Low cross is deflected. A lot of activity in the corner. I think that was the last touch Richmond there. Gonna be a UNC Asheville goal kick. Now Gomez will step off the pitch to a nice ovation. 23, Tristan Deloach. There's a look at Gomez. Veteran player, one of the captains on this Clemson team. And there's Presser again, causing problems. In the box, can he play it back to the middle? That's deflected again. Malcolm again. And now Clemson a chance to counter if it wants. Parrish. Deloach taken away. And then taken back. Left foot shot just a bit high. Again, that's just all work rate. Hard work makes up for many a mistake. Good tackle there, but he just sticks with it. Nearly picks it out at the top near post here. Worth another look. Just shy of the crossbar. Yeah, he didn't miss by much. Well, you talked about it. This is a young man, highly touted freshman, very exciting player. And it says something that Mike Noonan's got the confidence to start him alongside two dynamic players like Say and Silla. Yeah, and I like Mike's mentality. If you're if you're good enough, you're old enough. Not every coach is able to accept that. You may give lip service to that idea, but it takes legitimate trust to put a freshman out there in that sort of an attacking spot. Well, he's certainly proven to be up to it today, hasn't he? Just a lot of confidence when he's going at players. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Montana to throw. Here's the freshman. A little heavy. Comes back to Sandy. Deflected. Richmond's got it. Oh, wanted the wind up there. That's going to be deflected in a goal kick. A lot of young players out there right now, and you could tell not everybody on the same page. Yeah, just like a little miscommunication there. I don't know if that was maybe looked like Marco Garcia. Bulldogs, an opportunity to put something together. A bit of a disappointing performance, you might say, for a team that's been prolific in scoring goals, still trying to figure out that back line. But here today, they just have not been able to mount any sort of continuous pressure on Clemson. Yeah, Clemson has really come out of the gates hot. High pressure right away. Tough atmosphere, and they were so clinical in their finishing. Just quick three goals, 15 minutes into the game. And I still say, if you're on the wrong end of that, you are assuming that the team that's up three goals will sort of almost let you have one. <laughs> and that's, that's just not the case. Clemson has not taken the gas pedal off the floor, not for a moment in this game. Yeah, Coach Noonan has not been very hospitable at all to his visitors, has he? <laughs> we may ask Mike Noonan about that <laughs> in about five minutes and 40 seconds as we chat with him following the game today. Stick around for that. Well, I've been impressed with their with their commitment to defending. You know, we were talking earlier about Andima's come up, made some made some saves. Clemson defense has forced some shots from distance, but the number of times that Clemson defenders have gotten in front and blocked a shot, you know, real commitment to, to not conceding goals there, and that's important. Clemson content to play possession if nothing's there, and a redirect there, but again, not on the same page. Richmond and Strobeck. Yeah, as soon as that entry pass goes into that forward player, He's expecting the run to already develop. Richmond was hoping Strobeck was already in movement. Preston back on the field. And that's probably the night for Pitts Eckersall. Goal count still sitting at three for him on the season. Leader of the Bulldogs roster in that category. Stidham. McIver. Ball deflected. Very nicely done. Strobeck. Couldn't quite get it down. Garcia. Back to Montana. Sandy sends it all the way across. Good ball. Nicely done. In the box. I would call this from Clemson, almost given the allure of patience. They're still attacking. There's Montana on the move. Nice touch to the inside, in the air, and out of bounds. Enrique Montana, clever little footwork to get to the end line there. I think he was ultimately called offsides. 
That was the 30th shot for Clemson. 15 of those have threatened the keeper. Well. There's Presser turning. Full on sprint for Presser now. A lot of real estate. Maybe a bit too far. Yeah, he's going to be a problem, though. Nice defending by Brendan Herb. Up to Presser. That was Montana that beat him to the ball. Clemson will improve to 4-0 and on the season. This is the most goals they've scored in a game thus far. They've outscored the opposition 10-2. And unless something happens here late for the Bulldogs, it'll be three straight clean sheets. Yeah, two of those goals coming, obviously, on the season opening win over Indiana here. Talk about the two programs with very rich history. Ooh. That was very dangerous. Richmond just pressing again. Shot save, Strobeck. He hit Big time on, leg. Yeah, he hit that on a rope, didn't he? McGill wise not to try to hold that. He's just parrying that away, keeping that off frame. I've been very impressed with McGill. He's got eight saves in the second half. Yeah, and some of the spectacular variety, too. Here's Richmond. Left foot away. And just over the top. Another opportunity there. This time. Is that Marco Garcia? It was Garcia. Trying to nick one there at the end. Look at this again. Almost got it on the redirect. Oof. Like Final three, seconds. Seven, six, five, four, McGill gets it away, and that'll do it. A successful 90 minutes from the Tigers here tonight, Kevin. A 4-0 victory over UNC Asheville, who falls to 1-3 on the season. But Mike Noonan, they're a happy camper. Watched his team compete incredibly hard. He rolled body after body after body into the lineup, and they never relented. Well, mission accomplished. Win, clean sheet, get ready to move on, open conference play at BC, avoid some injuries. What I thought was a very good performance. No doubt about that. You saw four goals, four different players, two assists apiece for Say.